because he has received him back safe and sound. The older brother was angry, and he refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me so much as a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive, and is lost and is found. The word of the Lord. This is a very well-known parable for most of us. We know the story of the prodigal son, the wayward son who demands his inheritance before it's time while his father is still alive. And he takes all the money and runs away with it and goes off to a faraway country and then he spends it all in reckless living. He ends up becoming basically a slave for someone feeding their pigs, which was despicable for any Jew to even be around with pigs, let alone be feeding them. He was so hungry that he wanted to eat the food he was giving to the pigs. And then he kind of came to his senses and realized what he had done. And he said, you know, I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to, I'm going to confess. I'm going to say that I'm sorry. I'm not going to defend myself. And maybe, just maybe, my father will hire me as one of his servants. And even if I can't be home and be a child again and be a son, at least then I can kind of be home and just work for my father. That was his plan. And of course, you know the story. He, he makes his way home, but before he ever gets to the property, before he gets to the house, his father sees him while he's still a long way off. And he bursts through the front doors, runs out down the driveway, and throws his arms around his son. And we see an incredible picture of God's grace in that part of the story. But that's not the only part of the story. This is not just the parable of the prodigal son. It is the parable of two sons. In fact, most of the parable is devoted to the story of the older son. When he comes back and hears this celebration and then it's angry and doesn't want to come in. What I find interesting about this is that it makes it clear to us that the prodigal is not the only son who got lost. You don't have to run away to get lost, although some of us know what that's like. We've had prodigal moments in our lives when we've run away from God for whatever reason. Some of us more dramatically than others. <coughs> but the older brother, even though he was home and he was working hard, by the end of the story we see that he wasn't quite home. <coughs> we see this because when the son comes home and the father throws a party, the older son gets angry and that anger keeps him on the outside of the party. We talked about this yesterday morning. That's what anger always does 
keeps you outside the celebration, outside the family. Did you notice how the older brother doesn't even refer to his father as father, which would have been culturally appropriate to start every address as, you know, with his title, father. He just says, look. Which is usually not a smart way for a kid to address their parents. <laughs> and then he says, you've never thrown a party for me even though I've obeyed you my whole life. But when this son of yours came, he doesn't say this brother of mine, he says this son of yours. He has written him off. And of course he's done this because he's right. He's the one who's been good. He's the one who deserves the party. The grace of the Father is not concerned with being fair. He's just happy that his son is back. And so we see that the older brother, even though he was at home, physically he was not really at home. He had allowed himself to be pushed out of the family in his anger. But just like the father ran down the driveway to bring the prodigal son back in, Father basically does the same thing with the older brother. He doesn't just leave him outside. He comes out and pleads with him. Please come in to the party. Please be part of the family. Please celebrate your brother who was dead and is alive and is lost and is found. And the father's answer is sobering. And it's, it's what I want to focus on tonight in light of the fact that it's Christmas Eve and that we're celebrating the birth of our Savior. The father says to his older son, son. So right off the bat, he's bringing him back into the family. You are my son. And I am always with you. And that's Christmas. Jesus was born and he was called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. The father says, it was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive, he was lost and is found. This party is not a matter of rewarding good behavior. That's not what the primary purpose of your life is. It's not to do a good job for me, it's not to work hard for me, it's just to be with me. That is your greatest joy and that's my greatest joy too, as the father says. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. And this isn't news to you. You know that this is what we celebrate at Christmas, but we all need to hear it. I think we all have an easier time identifying with certain characters in the story. A lot of us probably identify more with the older brother. But some of us identify with the prodigal. Of course, the truth is there's a little bit of both in each of us. We know what it's like to be prodigal and to run away from God, and we know what it's like to be self-righteous and think that you're behaving, therefore we, we're the ones that deserve the party. We have a little bit of both in us, and the point for both of these sons is the same. Both of these sons are the daughters for our case tonight. And that is, the father runs to where we are and says, I'm with you. For the prodigals, Christmas is the father bursting through the front doors and running down the driveway and putting his arms around you. For the older brothers, Christmas is the father coming outside the house and saying, I want you inside the party. I want you to be part of the family. And that's exactly what happens in Jesus Christ. God is with us. And it is fitting to celebrate and be glad. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.